the school is, uh, was originally way back designed to cater for training students to take on apprenticeships with one of the neighbouring industries, but since it's been recited out here, uh, we're now catering for students coming in mainly from the rural area, and a greater majority of the students come from the densely populated Housing Commission area. The collective program was started through uh, a review at the school that was run a couple of years ago, and we felt that there was a change needed for in the curriculum, and students, parents and members of the community were involved in this review, and the outcome was that uh, we felt with the change in curriculum, we wanted the students to have more input into what they actually were doing at school rather than coming to school five days a week and being told they would do this, this and that. So the Year 9 elective program was introduced where their main core subjects were retained, but they were given a greater choice of negotiating what they were going to do with the remaining periods during the week. The elective program initially evolved because we were concerned about the attitude of the Year 9 students in particular to school because they had already done three years of pretty much the same program. And uh, we were also concerned about the relevance of the school program to the world of work outside. The other reason that we chose it was that at year 10, students at this school are required to make some pretty important decisions about what sort of uh, trade electives they want to pursue. Those electives generally lead into um, a vocational field, uh, for example, say the building or the metal trades and we felt that if they were making those decisions in year 10, maybe it's desirable for them to make some decisions at year nine as a, a practice run. I am um, done YDS News. Um, I had my first preference all the time because I liked it. It was real good working with cameras. Well, with the electives, you can think, um, like you've got your own choices. You think, now, will that help you when you get older? When, can you, you might be able to get a job out of that. If not, well, don't worry about it, going to something else. We were also thinking about developing what, um, in educational jargon, I suppose, transferable skills, such as decision making, um, self-reliance, developing an oracy program, in, in improving the curriculum component with oral skills, um, broadening the curriculum to include some options that haven't been available until this point in time, such as plastics, uh, electronics, cookery, uh, computer programming, and the be a number of other examples along those lines. And I think the important thing that makes our program different from uh, any others that we know of is the negotiated concept. We identified a core of study as a staff and as a parent, uh, parent staff student community and then we went to the students alone and said okay if this was the core what else do you think you'd need to do? And the students then identified um, a range of electives which naturally were what was the balance of the timetable that we left out and uh, some other areas that they thought they'd like to pursue. And that was the first step in our negotiation. You've got like choices on different things, what you can do. You can take it home with your parents and talk it over with them and they can say, oh, you're pretty good in woodwork, you're, pretty, you're good with your hands so you might as well go into woodwork. You're pretty brainy in, say, um, or you're falling behind in maths, say, so you can go into extra maths and catch up you know, and stuff like that. You just talk it out with your parents. Then the teachers, you know, you just bring it to school and the teachers have a look at it. They say, yeah, that's good, well, they put you into it. The assessment of the electives was uh, relied on a new model of assessment for the school. The Year 9 electives had a different assessment model from the rest of the school, and it involved the students in the first session stating what they wanted to achieve in that elective over the course of the elective and that was written at the top of the assessment sheet. At the end of the elective the student then had to say whether or not he felt he had achieved those objectives and then the teacher of the elective, the elective teacher wrote an appropriate comment at the bottom uh, also commenting on such things as participation and attendance and uh, preparation and cooperation, those sorts of uh, attitudinal objectives. There was one particular student in year nine who was uh, amongst a group of what many teachers might identify as your typical year nine student who is a little bit browned off with the system. And uh, he became very heavily involved in the video news project to the point where he was capable of, of producing a program on his own. And uh, the highlight of the program, I think, was at the presentation ceremony at the end of the year when 
that student was awarded a special award by the principal for his efforts in that program. Like, like some teachers to start with, you know, they have a look at you and you muck around a bit in class, like, oh, this kid's going to be an idiot. And then when you just, you know, st I start to go along during the year, you start to get each know each other well and you start, you know, going pretty good. Well, I thought teachers were a ball until the electors because they you have real fun with them, uh, show you what to do, you know, as an individual. Uh, like, uh, in maths they just oh, show you up on the board, but in the electives they come to you, you know, by yourself and talk to you. Help you out. Yeah. Mm. Like when I've done White Ash News, I sort of asked questions, you know, how to use things and all that, and they showed me and I really enjoyed it. And the teachers said, oh, he's getting on real well, he's starting to, you know, talk out. Like, I used to be quiet start with and went to school. <laughs> Believe it or not. <laughs> Failed. <laughs> well, then, um, started sort of asking questions how to do things and all that and sort of started changing a bit. I think the electives program was specifically designed to say and show the kids on a legitimate level in timetable, everything, assessment, everything, that your education is, is, belongs to you. That what, despite what you do or say in school, it's really up to you what you learn. It pointed, as a teacher, it pointed out to me, really, it really hit home to me, how little opportunity the kids got to make decisions, how little choice they really did have over their education, how unused there are new skills of, of talking and listening. They never used them. And once they were given the opportunity, it was frightening to them, and it frightened a lot of teachers. So I, I got a lot out of it. <laughs> I found it rewarding. From a, an admin point of view, I'd say there seem to be less problems with kids in the year nine generally, in terms of, I suppose, behaviour and hassles that kids were going through. Year 9 was always recognised as the, as the bad year, if you like. Nobody wanted to teach. And I think a lot of those problems disappeared. In terms of staff, I think there was a tremendous amount of thinking going on as to what they were doing in the school, what they were doing in their elective. So that it was much more reflection, even in their own class situation, because the task force would come in and say, look, negotiation is a main part of this program. It could work in your classroom situation, and this is the one way it could be done, and then I'd supply some materials, a few ideas. So those people would be thinking again about what they actually did. So at a staff level, it was a lot of, you know, day by day in service, I guess you'd call it. You had to go out and try and meet the concerns that those people had. So we, I guess we said about it in a number of ways. We called meetings. Of, of the people in the program to talk about the hassles they were having. The task force itself set about personally going out and talking to each of the teachers in the program. And we also asked the, uh, a fellow from the Warrigal Teacher Centre to come down and make an independent assessment. So whereas some of the teachers mightn't identify problems to us, they would certainly identify them to him. And so those three ways we tried to move out and say, OK, what, what's the hassles you're having? This is the aim of the program. How can we bring it all together again? If there were any divisions, and there were, <laughs> what do the kids get out of it? I think they had a lot more uh, choices to make. They had to make decisions for themselves that they hadn't made before. They had to record those in the diary, and if they followed the system we intended to, they had to go home and discuss it with mum and dad. So there was, there was a lot more communication going back to the family, back to the school, decisions about what was going on, kids finding out what was going on in other electives. They were looking around to the school to find out what things actually happened here rather than just being told, well, you've got to do that. So, you know, there's a lot of information seeking, I suppose. And the teachers just can't run your life. You can't say, oh, I'm going to put you in there because you're dumb, put you in there because you're good. You can't do that. You've got to just figure it out for yourself. I think it is all worth doing, and probably two main reasons. The first one, I'd ask myself, what would happen if we didn't do it? And that is constantly asked while you're in the program. And I would say if we didn't do it, we'd be facing worse problems further down the track. The school would be becoming more and more irrelevant to the kids. 
if you if you don't make it relevant, well, the school becomes more. You, know, you end up with more and more problems that you aren't able to solve. And basically, it's because your curriculum's out of touch with what they need. The second one, I think, it, for the from the staff point of view, a school needs a a program which they can take a bit of pride in, and you can start to put a bit of emphasis on, if you like. To, to be able to stand up and say, look, <clears throat> this is sort of program we're doing, we're proud of it, the kids are going well in it, we think we're on the right track.